example is that interest enhances learning, that we learn best about things that we're interested in. So in one study showing this, children were asked about, they were asked to look at a list of topics and say what topic they're most interested in and what they're least interested in. Then they had children read passages that were two grade levels above their current level about a topic of high interest and a topic of low interest and for each take a reading comprehension test at the end. And they found that children scored significantly higher on the test about their topic of high interest than their topic of low interest. Interest even enhances learning in talent areas. So these are areas that children are already talented in, that we know that they do well in. Chiksak Mahai and Ratund gave junior high school students beepers. And they had them beeped randomly over a two week period at different times. And each time that a child was beeped, they needed to say what they were doing at the moment and what their feelings were about it and who they were with. And what they found when they went then to their teachers three years later in their talent area and they asked them, how much has this child progressed in this area over these three years? Well, they found that the children who the teachers said had progressed the most were the children who three years earlier had expressed feeling the most interested and engaged when they were doing their talented activity. Finally, preschoolers' cognitive organization even seems to be set up around their interest. Renninger and Wozniak went into nursery school classrooms and observed children for many hours to see what toys children particularly liked to play with. And they called for each child those toys their interest toys. For each child, they pulled out two toys that that child particularly spent a lot of time with. And then they took the children and they seated each child one by one and showed up in front of them on a screen six different pictures of toys from their classroom, one of which was one of their interest toys. And they found that children spent the most time looking at their interest toys. So their attention then is riveted towards what they're already interested in. Well, obviously, our, we set up our worlds based on what it is that we're paying attention to. So if a child's interest is what is driving their attention, they're going to be learning the most about is what they're already interested in. So you can help the child learn the most by having their learning start with what they're interested in. But even going beyond attention, Renninger and Wozniak also went on to test memory, both recall memory and recognition memory, and likewise found that children are most likely to remember those toys that they were most interested in. So for example, they showed them 11 different cards and they placed their interest card in the middle and they told them that those cards showed presents that somebody had gotten for their birthday. Having shown them the cards, they then put them all away and they asked the child to recall all of the presents that that person had gotten for their birthday and children were most likely to come up with the interest toy even though it was in the most difficult position to remember. We have primacy and recency effects where we remember the beginning and the end of list the best and yet children were best able to remember the toy in the middle position. So memories, attention, and so on is all guided by what we're interested in and it would make the most sense then for a school system to educate children starting with what they're already interested in and then let their learning flow from there. And yet in the articles that these interest researchers write about children and, and learning and the implications of their findings for education, they will always have a paragraph inserted in there that laments how their findings, while highly interesting, could never actually be implemented in a practical way in schools because there's no way that a teacher could have all the time and energy to adapt the system to each child's different individual interests. And yet Montessori education does it as, as, as its core. So Montessori saw this early on. She was always very concerned that the school system be interesting for children. She had been bored in school herself as a child and did not want a school system that was boring. She said the role of education is to interest the child profoundly in an external activity to which he will give all his potential. So how does Montessori align itself so well with interest? Well, first of all, children are allowed to pursue their personal interests. So for example, a child who's particularly interested in horses might get into art history, say, and art and history, through their interest in horses by starting with studying Leonardo da Vinci's horses, for example. 
It's interesting because there's movement. We're always more interested in things when we get to move. I talked earlier about the experimentally designed materials. The lessons are highly interesting. Manasari was a master storyteller, and she and her co-workers developed these fascinating sets of stories that are the essential lessons in Manasari. And teachers, when they're in their year-long Manasari training courses, practice giving these lessons again and again and again. They practice them on their fellow students. The teacher trainers will watch them, and they work on the intonation of their voice and how to make these stories utterly captivating to children. And in elementary, in fact, the core of the curriculum is based around these five fascinating stories, uh, the, the origins of the universe, the origins of life on Earth, the origins of people, the origins of of writing and the origins of math. So sort of getting at these five different cores and then all of the children's learning stems out from there. The teacher's point is just to interest the child, to make them want to go on and learn more about things that fall out of those five different essential stories that the children hear in the beginning of the year in the elementary school classroom. So in these and many other ways then, Montessori really captivates children's interest. Another way in which Montessori captivates children's interest is through the interconnections. Psychology research knows that we're most interested in things that we know a little bit about, but not too much about. And by having these interconnections where a child, say, has seen a material in primary and learned some things with it, but then they see that material again in elementary and they go into it deeper and learn even more about it, that enhances children's interest. And also, children's interest is enhanced by the fact that there's only one teacher in the Montessori classroom giving all the lessons. You don't have all these different you know, art teacher and music teacher and so on. You have one teacher who's very aware of what the children, each child is doing across the curriculum and knows what captivates that child's interest. So they know how they can present the next lesson in a way that's going to feed into something that fascinated the child in a lesson the day before. This is something that's impossible to do in factory style teaching where the teachers aren't aware of what's happened up for the child in, in other classrooms that Montessori is able to capitalize on. Montessori said the secret of success in education is in the right use of imagination and awakening interest and the stimulation of seeds of interest already sown. <laughs>